Hey everybody, this is Jessica and I'm here today to show you um, some little insight into how I use the creative cloud libraries to um, speed up my workflow and really just maximize my time. And I'm sure you guys know creative cloud libraries have been um, around for a while now, but until fairly recently, I wasn't really utilizing them to the maximum potential to help save me time and get my work done faster. So um, I'm going to go through kind of some of my little process and maybe it will help you in your illustration or your design. So to start off with, you know, like you know that I'm inspired by couture and uh, fashion. So I like to take a look and make it the starting point for my designs. <clears throat> and so for this little design collection that I made, which I did some flowers, I did some patterns, I was really inspired by this Ellie Saab look here. So this is the look and uh, I've got it zoomed up here. And I just really liked the color. I thought that um, a lot of my styles collections would be really good for the shimmer. I like the feathers and all that stuff. So I have the look and I downloaded it to my desktop. So the first thing that I was going to do is to um, make a color scheme out of it. And so I actually, I like using this color.adobe.com and it's free, but you can just upload your image um, and then they give you these little circle things actually. And you can move them around and it's kind of like uh, zoomed in. And I mean, you can do these on your Photoshop document as well. But I kind of like seeing them all together in a palette like that and moving them around and playing with them. So that's how I started here. And I just moved them around until I had one that I like. And then I click save. And you can save it to one of your libraries. So it's really nice. Um, so that's how I started. So I got a jumping off point on the colors. And so then I'll go into Photoshop here and I'll show you my library that I have. And this is called Ellie, which is based off the look that it is um, that I started with. And I've got my color theme here that I had imported before. And then I also have additional colors that I use. Um, you can always add colors. But if you add colors from Photoshop, they're in here like this. And then if you add them from that color.adobe.com, they're here as a color theme. So um, this, creat this Creative Cloud Library is actually really useful to me because um, when I'm designing like a whole illustration set because I can keep the colors that I use here often right on hand. I keep the layer styles even that I'm going to use repeatedly so I don't have to hunt them up again. And I even rename them like this one I renamed Feathers. Um, just going to undo that. Then I have the dress feathers and I use my own little shorthand as to how I use that so that when I want to make this effect again, I have it really handy. So um, this is, and then you can even make your graphics and ones that are you're going to reuse little pieces so that you can drop that back in and make bigger things. Um, so that's just really useful there. And let's hear. So here, what I'm showing you here is one of my initial sketches. So just to kind of understand things, it helps me to actually sketch the look and kind of recreate it before I'm going to diverge and make my own whole collection of illustrations and things. So I kind of, you know, I made brushes, I experimented with that, what color I should use, um, kind of playing with some of these effects. So that was the next step. And um, let's go over here to sketch. This is like one of my, um, I made the, I redrew the dress again and kind of did a little bit nicer because in my first one I wasn't really worried about too much about making it look really nice. Um, just kind of like experimenting and learning. So here's the dress, but what I'm going to show you is one thing that really helps me. And if I can get my little pen to work here. Okay. Read my whack home tablet. Oh, there we go. I got to plug it in. That's why. All right. Because I like to have my pen. Here we go. My pen handy when I'm doing my brushes. So I'm going to show you like the, the next thing after I do, after I get my colors, is I start making some brushes that I want to use. And so here in my brush panel, 
I'll show you a few of these that I made to do this look. So I made this feather one. Um, I made a couple little flowers ones. So I used them over again and they're a stroke. So I've got them, you know, here are my brush presets. That's cool. Now, um, with my tool presets, I actually try to keep as much as possible most of my multi-purpose brushes in the brush panel, the ABR brush panel, rather than the tool presets. The tool presets, the only, um, just a little backstory, the only difference that the brushes have from the tool presets is the tool presets, you can actually save the color that you want the brush in, and you can save these um, variables up here, the blend mode, the opacity, and the flow. But this is a really good tip that I use. I try to keep everything in the ABR file and use my tool presets for project-based brushes. So I've got all of these ones here that I use with this project so that I can um, keep the same look throughout all my illustration collection. And uh, I'll go over that like brushes versus tool presets on another video. But um, most tool presets, you can just save them as a brush again, um, even if they came as a tool preset. So that's another story I'll go into on another tutorial. But where my tool presets come in really handy here, I'm going to cut this here, is I saved all these tool presets. And these are the brushes that I used for this collection. So they're really handy. I don't have to hunt them back up in my brush panel and then pick the color I've already got the brush, I've already got perhaps the size, and I've already got the color. So let's say I've got this like cool watercolor here. Like how I did the top is I got a watercolor, and then um, I've got this stripes brush that I use. I'm gonna make a new layer. And I made this just for this collection, and it does this sort of effect, but it's already preloaded with those colors, and I've already got the color, um, the color dynamic set on it. So that way every time I pick up this brush I don't have to think about it. Okay I know that I'm going to have the colors that I want on there. And for example I'll put it over this thing here, this little piece of watercolor, and then I'm going to go to my creative cloud libraries and I will, uh, there's the schnope, there it is, the subtle top. That's the style that I wanted. So if you see here you can kind of see the effect that I got on the top and here it looks about the same on this sketch here this kind of cool little shimmery effect so that is super useful um, the thing of using your tool presets and keeping your brushes that you use for this collection on hand together so when I was making this I have all these different brushes I've got the colors loaded so then I can go and I want to make some illustrations and they all look coherent because I'm, um, you know, using the same brushes and, you know, you can always change it, but it saves a ton of time. And the fact of having my brushes handy and having my styles handy makes it really um, for a faster workflow. So I'm just going to delete these and I'll go over here and I'm going to show you these are some flowers that I made based on this dress and just based on the styles. And as you can see, I like some of the brushes look familiar, like I've got this kind of a tool effect brush here, and I have the same tool effect brush on here. So it's like it makes a consistency and I don't have to hunt it back up and pick the color again. I've just got it on hand. So like I will just make a new flower here just to kind of show you how this helps my workflow. So I'm going to go to my tool presets presets and I'm going to get this um, watercolor one and I just save these on the fly so I've got weird names and whatever but it's basically it's something that I can understand so I'm going to make some just a few leaves here with a let's see here I'll just cut this here let's just make like four leaves with a watercolor brush that looks really pretty and delicate I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to get the tool that I had gotten. Is that the one that I want? And some of these I didn't really save that well, but you're going to get the idea. So now I've got the tool and I'm going to load it. I'm going to just do that and kind of make a little set of petals again or something. And now I'm going to make a new layer. And I had made this brush. There was like a center brush here. Oh yeah, center Ellie. So I had made this center brush 
that I wanted to use on um, like the center of the flowers. And so that when I just kind of uh, wiggle it here, it does this little cool effect. So, and as you see, the colors are already loaded. And that's just, you know, that's how useful it is. And I can do it on other, use it for other things or whatever. But I'm going to go like this, wiggle it in the center, and then I'm going to go over to my Creative Cloud Libraries and flip through my different styles that I have and pick one that I like. And then, you know, you see it just makes it really fast. So I like I like that one. It's really kind of subtle and, and nice. So you see here, with everything selected, I made a flower and I made it really fast. Um, the next thing I'll do, I'm going to make it another matching flower, but I'll do it just a little bit different or I'll make a, just something matching. Let's hear. So let me go back here to my tool presets. I keep selecting the wrong one there. I'm a little bit tired, but I will grab, uh, let's see here, the watercolor edges. So what do I want to make here? Maybe I'll just make like a bigger flower and kind of just play around with some styles here and just do something a little bit different. And that's on multiply, which is why it was, let me just see here, normal. Okay, so let's just play around with like making some petals. And I don't really know what I'm gonna do with this yet, but as you see, it's like a different flower. It's got some different um, effects. Let's see here, let's make a new layer. Now I'll add some sort of like a tool on top of that. So I'm gonna grab one of my tool brushes, Ellie Tool, let's see what, and this one I had saved it in like a peach, but I wanna make it a bit lighter. So I'm gonna make that really light. And now I'll add that of something different and then now let's hear maybe I'll add a layer below that and add some of that poking out the side and that's really cool and now let's hear I'll make a new layer and I'll just go ahead and put one of these styles already on it just so I could see it a little bit better and let me grab my recent brush the I think this is the center brush there we go so I will just enlarge this a bit and brush that on there. And then I can, I'll flip through my things again and kind of see, play, see what style I want to choose. That one's, a, that one's a little too dark. I kind of saved this dark style on some of them, but I like the lighter monochromatic sort of look. So I'll leave the same one. So as you see, like I just made two flowers. I made them really fast. They're just kind of some abstract sort of flowers, but they have a consistency to them. And I didn't have to do a lot of, um, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to do so much work by having my brushes right there in the tool presets handy with the colors on them and my styles already saved here in my, uh, in my libraries. So that just really worked up, uh, speeded up my workflow. And um, then as you can see, if you go visit my website, I made some patterns based off this. I made these flowers and I might do some more things. Um, but that's kind of how a collection grows and how I utilize and make good use of this, um, my libraries for one, the Creative Cloud Library, how it really helps me to keep my style collection, my illustration collection coherent and it just saves me loads of time. So this is a really good thing that you should be using if you're not using. And then another thing that I really use and I take advantage of is making tool presets for a project. So I've got my brushes that I want and I have the colors that I want them in or the ones that I use the most of. So then that just helps me work faster. So I really, um, like keeping these tool presets handy for the projects and that way I could just pick up and want to get that get that uh, effect again but I don't have to sit here and go through my brushes palette and go oh which watercolor brush did I use gosh I can't remember you know you've got it saved 
So it's all about working smarter um, and not harder, you know, and saving your time. So hopefully this was a bit of a bit of useful for you, useful information. And if you're not already taking advantage of some of these um, resources, then hopefully you'll start doing that in the future. So I'll just talk with you later. And if you have any questions, put them in the comment box or um, send me an email too if you want to suggest or request a tutorial.